Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Reclaiming My Life podcast. We are so excited to be here with you this evening. Reclaiming My Life, as some of you may know, and some of you, it may be your first time seeing our podcast. So we always like to let you know that Reclaiming My Life actually came from a book and Amazon's number one bestseller, Reclaiming My Life. And what is Reclaiming My Life about? It is about trials and trauma that we've experienced, how we have overcome those trials and trauma and reclaim our lives. Please meet my beautiful co-authors, Dr. Tiffany Tyson. Hello, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. The lovely Miss Tabitha Chancy. Hello, and thank you everyone for joining Reclaiming My Life. The beautiful Miss Joanne Bellamy. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our podcast, Reclaiming My Life. Thank you for joining us on tonight. And the beautiful Miss Ursula Jones who will be our moderator this evening as we talk about her chapter in the book, New Addictions. Hello, thank you. My name is Ursula Jones and I will be the moderator for tonight of Reclaiming My Life. In the chapter, I talked about new addictions. New addictions came about from my old addictions. I was on drugs. I was on cocaine. And I did other things like being heartless to a friend, having sex with multiple people and opposite sex, loan shopping, and a lot more. Those were my old addictions. Now I have new addictions. I have reclaimed my life. I am happily married. I have four beautiful children. I have six grandchildren. I am an entrepreneur. And I have reclaimed my life. So that was how my chapter started of my new addictions. I want to give a definition of addictions. The addictions means the factor of or condition of being addicted to a particular substance, thing, or activity. Similar, dependency, craving, habit, and weakness. A lot of people have addictions, but they don't, sometimes they don't want to admit to it. But like I said, my addictions were drugs. You could have, you could be addicted to food. You can be addicted to gambling. You can be addicted to porn. Uh, You can be addicted to so much more. Addiction is bad. For my addiction, I had to pray my way out. I went through a lot. I shamed myself. I shamed my character. But I had to look at it. I had hope. I started praying and asking God to help me because I wanted to be delivered. I no longer wanted to be on drugs. I want to tell you something. I didn't say this, but how I, came, how I began to begin to get on drugs, I went through the state of depression. I had a boyfriend that got killed and he, he was a drug dealer. So the people who I hung around with, they were on drugs and that's how I in, got introduced to drugs. So that's how I got on drugs. I had to watch the company who I had around me. And after I did that, after I prayed, and asked God to deliver me, I was okay. Um, I want to bring on the visionary author of this book, Claudia Massey. Hello, beautiful. Hey, Claudia. (laughs) How are you doing? (laughs) I am wonderful. How are you? I'm doing great. So, Claudia, as you've been a life coach, can you share with the audience um, the help you all you offer if someone is in need for um, help on addiction and how could you be of any help to them to get back on track? 
Yes, of course. You know, but first I just want to say, listening to your testimony, I am so glad to hear how you reclaimed your life. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank yes. you. It was the help of God. Yes. Well, you know, first of all, what I like to do is find out the why, you know, what led this person to the addiction, okay? Um, a lot of times we may find that a person has been traumatized. So let's just use, um, they have been sexually violated and um, it could have been, um, you know, by a family member or anyone just traumatized, okay? And that, that um, being traumatized and not sharing with anyone, just suffering in silence. And, you know, we're noticing um, behavior changes and things like that. But because we aren't talking, we don't have that talk therapy. We don't have that outlet. You know, we may feel worthless. We may feel useless because of, you know, we've been violated. So a person can turn to drugs. It could be um, a person may be going through an illness and they're on medication and they become addicted to the medication, which, you know, they start feeling like I need something stronger. Mm -hmm. And then that can lead to uh, a drug addiction. It could be um, from neglect, neglect from parents, you know, when children or preteens, you know, they feel neglected, they feel alone. You know, they want to turn to drugs. It's um, attention seeking, okay? Um, just pulled in by the wrong crowd. It could be your environment. And and when I say pulled in by the, by the wrong crowd, it could be friends. It could be family. And it can also be even um, witnessing your parents doing drugs. So you feel my parents are doing it. It's the right thing to do. But, you know, ways that I try and help is, you know, I help them um, navigate through stressors that leads them um, to the temptation or to the addiction. I may suggest an accountability partner, someone that will check in uh, with them weekly, uh, maybe do drug tests weekly, you know, manage, start managing their funds for them. You know, there are several ways we can help a person uh, that's addicted. Uh, I've actually had to help someone so, you know, not only from my educational experience being a life coach, but also from personal experience of helping someone um, be free from a drug addiction and find new activities for the person to do to keep to keep them engaged, um, to keep them productive, you know, to help them stray away from those negative emotions that lead them to um, the temptations of the addiction. Thank you so much, Claudia. Thank you. I appreciate you so much. So next, I want to bring on one of my co-authors, uh, Miss Joanne Bellamy. Hello, Miss Ursula. Hey, Miss Joanne. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great, Chain Breaker. Great. Okay, Miss Joanne, I know in your chapter you didn't talk about any addictions that you had, but I want to ask you a question. Have you had any addictions or do you know, have a, do you have a family member or a friend that was on, was had an addiction? And if you did, what did they do about it? Miss Ursula, as a matter of fact, yes, I did have an addiction. I was addicted to depression medication. Um, I started taking depression medication because I had an illness of depression, loneliness. Um, I've always felt left out, unworthy. And that led to me taking depression medication. Also what I experienced um, with um, domestic violence and a lot of other issues, all this brought about taking the depression medication. and. I became addicted to it because I felt I couldn't do without it. I, I, I felt I couldn't function. I felt I couldn't be around people. I felt like that that pill was helping me to talk, to even walk, to even do housework. You know, I felt like I couldn't do anything without this medication because I was taking it in the morning. I was taking it in the evening. I was taking it at night. 
And when I took that pill, I felt like I was, I was a celebrity. I felt like I had everything under control and everything. But, but then after a while, I sort of noticed that I had to have something stronger because I was hooked on that so long until I had to have something stronger. So I went on something stronger to keep me that I thought would keep me functioning and keep me going. But then I realized the effect that it was starting to have on my body. I, I started not feeling like myself. And, and the doctor kept telling me, you know, you need, you know, this depression medicine could um, hurt, hurt you in other ways. So I was like, you know what? I need to do something. I started praying and I started asking the Lord, take me off this medicine. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be in an institution somewhere. Take me off of this, I, you know, help me. So I started, I started taking it um, instead of every day, three times a day. I started taking it three times a week and see, I was so addicted until I was having withdrawals and all this kind of stuff that was going on with my body. But, you know, I, I stayed in prayer. I kept that faith. Then I went down the, um, twice a week, then once a week. And I was like, okay, I'm going off of this completely. So the doctor didn't take me off. I went off myself. Wow. I reclaimed my life yes. from that um, depression addiction that I carried around for years. Oh, thank you so much, Miss Joanne, for that. Thank welcome. you so much. You're welcome. You're thank welcome. you. I want to call in the next co-author, Miss Tabitha Chancy. Hello. Hello, Miss Tabitha. Yes. I want to ask you a question. I know you didn't talk about addictions in your story, but do you know a family member or a friend or even yourself um, that had an addiction and that you couldn't control? And if so, how do they reclaim their life? Um, drugs I've never tried. Um, really, pills, I hate taking pills. So no type of things like that. However, I smoke cigarettes. To me, that is an addiction because it's something I can't quit. 98% of the people that, I, that I'm around, they don't smoke. So when I actually want to go smoke and they say something like, um, don't smoke that cigarette, I, I actually get angry because it's something I don't want to do. I pray for God to take this wound away from me, the smell, the urge. So it bothers me when somebody say something about it and it's something I don't want just as bad as they don't want me to do it. But I consider that as an addiction because it is something that I'm doing that is so hard for me to quit. And I don't think I've ever had to battle anything this hard in my life. But smoking has been a challenge for me. And people look at it as something minor or something normal. No. Smoking to me is probably just as worse as someone that's doing drugs and want to get off because it's something that I just cannot stop. And I pray about this thing. So, yes, I consider me smoking an addiction. And I'm ready to reclaim my life on that part. <laughs> wow, that's amazing, Tabitha. I feel you on that because I used to smoke cigarettes and I know it's hard. I know what you're going through. I, I appreciate you and um, everything that you said, um, you know, about the addiction. Next, I want to bring on Miss Dr. Tiffany Tyson. Hi, beautiful. Hello, Miss Tiffany Tyson. Um, Miss Tiffany, could you sum up the addictions and give us the audience some information or number or place or something um that uh, somebody that has an addiction, you know, will have hope because when I was on addiction, I didn't have like I prayed, you know. I didn't have a I didn't have no friend to go to. I didn't know about nobody the uh um uh, no kind of help, extra help I could have went to. Um I think if I would have, I probably would have um got off the addiction sooner or it probably wouldn't have led that bad. But um I didn't have any help. So could you tell the audience um, some some point of views, you know, of uh, addictions and how they can get help and where they can go and what they can do? Sure. So it's important to know that addiction can actually affect the entire family. And so it's important not for only the person that's um, 
using the drugs, but also the family to get help as well, because they're watching their loved ones go through this. And sometimes they may feel, feel helpless, like they don't know how to help them. So one thing that the individual themselves can do is either seek counseling. And so counseling is available through either an outpatient setting or either through a health coach. There's also detox programs. So hospitals do have detox programs and you can actually go to the hospital and let them know, especially if you're dealing with alcohol, there's um, a seven day detox program. There are also residential programs. If you feel like you need a, a longer stay, there's residential programs. For the family members, there is Nar Anon. Nar Anon is for Narcotics Anonymous. It's also helping the family members who have loved ones that are abusing narcotics. There's also Al Anon, which is also for family and friends of individuals that are abusing alcohol. It provides support for them as well. And some of these programs offer a 12 step program. There's also Alcohol Anonymous, there's also Narcotics Anonymous for the individual that's actually dealing with opioids or Percocets or also alcohol. And these are often 12-step programs. And there's even religious-based programs that offer um, biblical help. They offer different activities as you're going through these 12 steps. And uh, the, sometimes they have yoga, sometimes there's art involved. And then they also have um, therapy as well. And in these groups, they have people that can be your, your support or your mentor. And if you're struggling, like someone mentioned earlier, they had, they had different cravings or different triggers. And so you can have someone to help you be accountable. You can call up your support person, say, hey, you know, I just rode by this, um, this particular restaurant or I just rode by this particular um, drugstore or either this convenience store. And when I see this store it reminds me, or I saw my old friends hanging out here. And so you can call them and they're there to kind of help talk you through, hey, you know, let's go do something else. And so they're offering your, um, your mentor or your support person. And there's also SAMHSA, and we'll put the 1-800 number up. There's also SAMHSA is a 1-800 number that you can find different support groups within your area, whether you live in Houston, whether you live in, LA. There are different, um, SAMHSA has a 1-800 number that you can actually go to and find these different um, support groups. And so there is help out there. The important thing though, if you have a friend or a loved one that's going through this, not to be judgmental, be compassionate about what they're dealing with and understand, as Ms. Claudia mentioned earlier, there are different reasons that people become addicted. They may be experiencing a trauma or they may be dealing with depression or anxiety. Some people are self-medicating or say if they just had surgery and they're having pain, and sometimes individuals can and get, uh, become addicted to the pain medication. And then also helping loved ones recognize, if you're um, at home, if you have a loved one, recognizing the signs of abuse to be able to help that person. And sometimes when you ask that person if they're using, they may be in denial. They may not tell you that they're abusing because A, they don't want you to know. And sometimes they may feel shameful or embarrassed that they're even, you know, in this particular place. And so it's important when you talk to them to be compassionate and non-judgmental, provide a listening ear. And then, like I said, list some of these resources or talk to them about different resources or, hey, I know this particular community health center, they're here, they're able to help you with your addiction. Thank you so much for all the information, Dr. Tiffany. I really appreciate you. Yes, so okay. now I want to turn it back over to the visionary author, Ms. Claudia Massey. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ursula. Thank you for sharing your story and giving hope to others that are actually going through such a challenging time with an addiction. And Dr. Tyson, we thank you for all the information, all the resources that you have given tonight. Thank you so much. If you are looking at this podcast, we thank you. We thank you for tuning in every Monday night um, to join us. I'm sorry, that's every Sunday night to join us. We thank you so much. Also, if you would like to book us, please do so. 
you can go to our website, which is reclaimingmylifetour.com. That's reclaimingmylifetour.com. You can catch us every Sunday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Preach the Word Worldwide Network. If you are in Atlanta, Georgia, you can catch us on the local um, TV station, which is WYGA 16.5. But you can always download the app, Preach the Word Worldwide Network, and catch us live there. We thank you, as always, for your support, your love, your encouragement. If you or a family member, if you're going through anything tonight and you need to reclaim your life, always know that there is hope for healing. Thank you for joining.